Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Baha Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Baha Hashem, Rekakwadash. All blessings, honor, glory, and power be unto the Heavenly Father, whose name is Yahweh, and His only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, whose name is Yahweh Shai. Double honor to the apostles and the elders of the great millstone who taught me this truth. And salutation to the elect scattered abroad throughout the four corners of the earth. My name is Amuan. Go bar back with another lesson. Lord willing to edify and to feed the lambs of Yahweh Bashim al through the Holy Spirit. Rakak with Dash. Lord willing, this is edifying straight to the point. Now, this is an article I just came across from the Bloomberg.com in the economics, right? And this was um, published October the 20th, 2021, which was yesterday, all right, because we in um, October 21st. It's after midnight. So it was the 21st. So this was hours ago. All right. Now it says here, Venezuelans break off flakes of gold to pay for meals, haircuts. All right. So people down in Venezuela, the Northern Kingdom, are, are breaking off flakes of gold to pay for certain things as far as ne uh, necessities, essential food, haircuts, etc. So it says hyperinflation has stripped the local currency of its value. And this is coming to America. Believe it or not, this is coming to Babylon, the great America. All right. We've been telling you, warning you from the apostles, elders on down about the crash of the dollar because the dollar, there's, the dollar is done. The, the, um, uh, what is it, the Bolivar, I believe it is. The currency that they call it down there in, um, in, um, excuse me, in uh, Venezuela is, is obsolete. I remember, yeah, what is it, um, Bolivia, yeah, I forget the name of it, Bol Bolivar, maybe, whatever, you know, somebody could fact check that and put it in the comment section, but, um, I remember years ago, people took, people were taking those paper currencies and crafting certain things with it, making like bags, purses, and crafty things, and and trying to sell it for, or barter, uh, um, those stuff for food and, and goods, so this is what it got. This is what it is getting to, and this is what it, it, it have came to down there in um, Venezuela. It says dollars, pesos, um, reyes, uh, and euros are also common alternatives. So if you got a dollar, if you got a peso, uh, reyes, however you say that, and euros are also common alternatives, as well as the strips of gold. So in other words, the Venezuelan currency is obsolete. It is finished. And guess what? The dollar is going to follow suit. The peso, the euro, all right? All these other paper currency are going to follow suit, all right? So here's an image of um an individual with with flakes of gold, and it's on a scale, all right? They, they, they offloading, <laughs> you know, flakes of gold, putting it on a scale to measure the amount to, to, pretty much this is a barter system, gold for food, gold for haircut. In the background, you see some Gillette deodorant, some cream, some vitamin C. It's bad out there, man. And this is coming to Babylon, the great America. The caption says, a customer places gold wrapped in a crumpled bolivar. So, yeah, bolivar is the uh, um, the currency or was the currency. So, the bolivar banknote on a scale for a payment at a pharmacy in uh, Tumeramo, Tumerimo. Venezuela. So it says to fathom the magnitude of Venezuela's financial collapse, travel southeast from Caracas, past the oil fields, and over the Orinoco River, and head deep into the savanna that blankets one of the one of the remotest corners of the country. There, in the barbershops and restaurants and hotels that constitute the main strip. Of one dusty little outpost after another, you'll find prices displayed in grams of gold. Okay, so picture walking into a restaurant, hotel, barbershop, or a place of business, and you're looking at the menu or the price of something. There's no bolivar or currency anymore. It's now replaced in grams, weight grams of actual gold. All right, because first of all, that proves one thing, that gold is real money. That's one. It proved gold and silver is real money. When you go into the scriptures, it tells you about the riches that Abraham had. It mentions silver, gold, cattle. All right. I believe it was silver, gold, and cattle. All right. And land is also riches and resources. So that proves that gold is really money. All right. 
which we always get into the to the economics of how the gold the Federal Reserve System came into act. You know how in the seventies the the gold reserve and the, and the you know the um, convertibility of the dollar to gold was suspended and it's been has been suspended ever since. In other words, you can't go because but prior to that you you could be able to go to a, a bank and redeem your paper notes for the value of gold or silver that it was worth. But you can't do that no more. Go to Citibank, go to Bank of America, go to any bank and tell them you want to redeem your twenty dollar you want to redeem your gold for this twenty dollar bill or hundred dollar bill. They're gonna look at you like you're crazy. So it says a one night stay at a hotel that'll be half a gram. Lunch for two at a Chinese restaurant a quarter of a gram. A haircut an eighth of a gram. Hey, this is this is bartering. This is back to the old ways, man. This is, yo, know, this is this is man. This is what's coming to Babylon the Great, man. All right. It says, please. It says George or Jorge Pena, twenty figured that eighth came to three small flakes, the equivalent to five dollars U.S. After getting a trim one recent weekday in the town of. Timura, tur, tur, tumirimo, he handed the, he handed them over to his barber who satisfied Penna's calculation, quickly pocketed them. You can pay for everything with gold, Penna says. <laughs> hey, that, that's some that's some shit, man. And there's a spirit, you know, the apostle going back last year, you know, for, for matter, matter of fact, years ago, you know, but he, he was pushing it heavily um as of last year, you know. You know, if you can, you know, try to get some gold and try to get some silver, some silver coin, gold, gold coin, silver coins. Not that it's going to save you or deliver you, but we know that that's actual money. You know, when things, you know, uh, go south or whatever, if, if things, if the dollar collapsed right now, of course, it would be all chaos and, and anarchy. But gold and silver will still always be money, even though it won't be able to deliver you out of any situation. And proof is these people that are actually buying food with gold in Venezuela is working out to their benefit for now, as as it stands for now. All right, because things are gonna get crazy and work and, and more and escalate and you know worse. All right, pursuing a, uh Jeremiah thirty and seven, Jacob's trouble, Daniel's twelve and one. Things are gonna get real bad where money and, and silver, gold, and any of that thing ain't gonna matter. So for for right now. It's, it's, you know, holding up some value for these people out there, for the, for the Northern Kingdom out there in Venezuela. Okay. So it says, in the high-tech global economy of the 21st century where tap and go transaction, transactions are the, are the rage, this is about as low as tech gets. All right. As tech as it gets. Because you're going back to the old world when you traded with gold and traded and bartered with silver. You know, with silver was like more like of a um a bartering in the marketplace. You got your silver, you do quick transaction, and gold was more like a savings in a way, all right? Because gold held more value. So it says most of the world moved on from gold as a medium of exchange over a century ago. It's um resurfing in Venezuela today is the most extreme manifestation of the repub uh, repu uh, reputed repudiation of the local currency, the Bolivar, that has swept the country. After years of meddling in the economy by Nicolas Maduro's ex uh, socialist regime, the Bolivar has rendered almost worthless by hyperinflation, which is coming to America. We are in a phase of inflation right now. Hyperinflation when it, it it goes to the extreme. All right, things are going up in price. Because really the dollar is going down in value, so it seems as though things are going up in price. Because now it takes more dollars to e equate to the same thing that you were able to purchase five years ago for X amount of mo uh, dollars or money. It says, in its place, the dollar has become the de facto choice in Caracas and other major cities along the western border. And remember, the dollar is the, is the, the reserve currency of the world. So when a dollar go, then everywhere else on this planet Earth, all right, is going to drop the dollar. Okay, the dollar is going to be going everywhere. Once the dollar is going in the U.S. and there's absolutely nothing here in Babylon, then every every part of the world is going to feel that. All right, that's why these uh, countries 
uh, bringing in their digital currencies because that's going to be the next best thing to replace the dollar, which is going to lead to the MOT to the B. So it says, along the western border with Colombia, the peso is the dominant currency. It's used in more than 90% of the transactions in the biggest city in the region. San Cristobal, according to the research firm Ecoanalytica, down on the southern border with Brazil, the real is often the currency of choice. And the euro and the cryptocurrencies have their niches in parts of the country too. So, yeah, man. I mean, things are going. Things things are going is, is escalating, man. All right, they out there paying, buying food with chips of gold, you know, little flakes of gold, you know. That you know that in other words, that's that's you know they like bartering again. They are going back to the old way. All right, so let me bring out this quick precept. Um, I'm going to start here. This is uh, Proverbs 11 and 4. It says, Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness de delivereth from death. All right, so riches, you know, it's not going to profit when the wrath of the Lord is coming. All right, but righteousness is going to deliver from death. And we know that mass uh, death is going to come by the way of famine. All right, food shortages, plagues, pestilence. But money, gold chips, you know, gold shavings and chips of gold ain't going to be able to save when the destruction comes. Because this is the ultimate judgment of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. This, this, this society, this, this world, this utopia is breaking down. It's becoming a dystopian society in which only the, uh, the, which, in which only the rich is going to profit, you know, for the time being until the Lord take him out. So again, riches is not going to profit in the day of wrath, but the righteousness is going to deliver from death. All right, so let me go from there to um, Zephaniah 1 and 14. It says, The great day of the Lord Yahweh is near. It is near and hasteth greatly. Even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty man shall cry there bitterly. The day of the Lord, it's going to be the day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, because the Lord Yahweh is going to send his son Yahweh, Shah, our Lord and Savior. To bring this wrath, trouble, distress upon this world. So that day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness, desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. And that's when you know, Yahweh Shai come back, he's coming back with all these things. The fire is being kindled before he makes his return, like it tells you in the book of Luke. All right. He's coming to send fire on this earth. What will he be if it's ready to be kindled? So the fire is already being kindled. And ultimately, the ultimate fire, which is going to burn this place utterly to end all be all, is going to be the ICBM missiles along with the fire from the chariots. All right. So before that, you're going to have wrath, distress, trouble. And we've seen that in Venezuela. If you don't got if you don't got any of those currencies, neither if you have any gold, then you, you pretty much asked out out there. You know, you got to try to find a, you know, barter another way. You got to either be farming and selling your goods or you know i know damn well you know women out there prostituting themselves is on a rise out there you know so it says verse 16 a day of trumpet and a, uh, an alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers which uh, babylon the great is that that main city it says now bring distress upon men that they shall walk like blind men they because they have sinned against the Lord. And that's talking about all, all of Israel. All right. All the two thirds of Israel. All right. Is going to feel this because this is the time of Jacob's trouble. But when it says he shall be saved out of it, it's talking about the elect. All right. So then people down there are going to feel it. People over here in America are going to feel it. People, Israelites throughout the four corners of the earth are going to feel it. If they're not part of the elect, you know, even some of the elect is going to go through the trial period, but the Lord is going to find a way to deliver, make a way to deliver. It says, and their blood shall be poured out as dust, and their flesh as dung. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy, which is the land of America. For he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. So the Lord is going to hasten in these times. All right. The land of America, Babylon, the great is going to be utterly wasted and destroyed. That's going to be the end all be all. The Lord is saving the best for last. So what's happening in Venezuela 
It's coming here to Babylon the Great. It's coming here to America. All right. It is coming here to America. Believe that. All right. According to the scriptures as it is written. So with that, I just want to bring out this article. All right. Um, as it says here. Hold on. This article. Uh, I got this ad popping up. But anyway, you've seen it. Venezuela breaks all flakes of gold to pay for meals and haircuts. And here's a guy weighing it out on a scale like if it's some, you know, looking like weed, but it's actual gold. That's what gold looked like in its raw form. All right, that's what raw gold looked like, you know? So anyway, man, Lord willing, this is edifying to the elect, straight to the point. Till next time I say shalom.